In today's episode, we're going to take a look at this. The Ender 3 S1. It's got some nice features, filament runout, CR Touch Auto Level, a PEI flexible metal bed, direct drive. Pretty nice, but it's $429 on Amazon. Is it worth it? Let's take a look on today's Filament Friday. This episode of Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. The Ender 3 S1 is the latest upgrade to the very popular Ender 3 3D printer. The printer retails for $429 at Creality or on Amazon. Here's a chart that shows the difference between the Ender 3, Ender 3 V2, and the Ender 3 S1. You can see in red all the unique features. It's got a taller print area of 270 millimeters, a direct drive extruder, CR touch leveling, a PC spring steel sheet bed, and a Type-C USB connectivity. He also has a larger SD card. Also not shown in red is a filament runout sensor, double lead screws for the Z-axis, a unique control board, and 96% assembled. At least that's the number they claim. So this is the 96%. You can see the upper and bottom portions are mostly assembled. It didn't take me long to assemble this. It's just four screws at the bottom, mount the LCD, mount the spool holder at the top, and then some wiring connections. Their manual was incredibly hard to read because it's very small and very fine print. You get the same LCD as the Ender 3 V2. It's not touch. You do have a drawer for tools just like the Ender 3 V2. You have a large SD card and a USB-C port to connect to your computer. You have adjusters on both the X and Y to tighten the belt and a filament runout sensor up by the spool holder. This is where it starts to get unique. This is a direct drive extruder they call the Sprite. There's a shot from the side. On the other side you can see there's a CR Touch installed and a board for all the connectors and then one flat cable connects to the top of this thing. To mount it, which you have to do to assemble it, it takes four screws. One, two, three, four. I like this bracket setup. My guess is at some point they'll offer other features like maybe a laser in addition to this direct drive extruder. It's got a flexible steel bed which makes it easy to pop prints off and it's got dual Z drives, both stepper motors with threaded rods. And it's got a heavy duty connector for the heated bed. The spool holder and filament runout sensor just snap on top. And then it's got a connector for the Z motor in the base and a filament detector, plus this expansion interface, which looks like it could be for LED lighting. The bottom of the printer has this full cover to remove, but it blocks the vents on the power supply, which I don't like. It's a unique 32-bit board, and they improved the connections for the high current wires. When I zoomed in on the board, I could see it had an RCT6 arm controller. That's only a 256K flash memory. If I look at my Ender 3 V2, which has a similar ARM processor, it's an RET6, which is 512K of flash. So now that's a bit of a concern. $429 and I'm only getting 256, one for 289, they give me 512K. I mean, you're not using all the memory anyway, but still for 429, I should get the bigger chip. Now, if this is due to the semiconductor shortage, and I heard it might be, they're probably gonna take that 256 and start putting into other machines. And I've heard that may be happening. And if that's the case, now we got to watch what firmware we download. Because if we download a firmware that was built for 512, but then we have another machine that's got 256, and you put that 512 in there, it may not load, but it also may load and not work right. So that's a concern going forward. I hope Creality doesn't do that. But to me, this one for 429, this should have had 512K out of the box. It came with some sample filament in a bag but it gets all tangled up. For $429, I expect this, at least a small spool. This is what you used to get with a CR10, CR10 Mini. Why they don't do that anymore for this machine, it should get this instead of this. As the instructions called out, I manually leveled the bed at each corner, but instead of using paper, I used my Filament Friday e-leveler tool. Then I ran their 16 point auto level, and then the bed was ready for the first print. So how well does it print? Not bad. And it's got that auto level sensor. It does a 16 point check. And it's also got a PEI bed on top of aluminum. It does have adjusters, but you kind of level things out, then run the auto level, and then you have to do a Z offset adjustment. It explains in their hard to read manual. But once you do that, it's set. And it did a great job leveling everything. And then the first print stuck really nice. It was this sample like Bitcoin 
thing that they include on the SD card. Stuck right to the bed, no problem. Next, I did a couple check cues, measured them, and they look good. They measured, uh, you know, close to 20 by 20 by 20. I did do a real tall vase mode, came out nice. This is another sample print they include. It's a handle, came out pretty good. I'm not sure where you put it on this machine. I guess you squeeze it in there, but it's not bad. And then because it's direct drive, I could do flexibles like this flexible octopus. So from that point of view, I think it's a pretty good hot end assembly, auto level, and bed material to get that easy first layer for a beginner. But there's one thing about this hot end for $429, I don't like. Here's a shot of the hot end looking up at the nozzle. Now let me take the nozzle out. You can see it's got PTFE tubing going all the way down to the nozzle. For $429, this thing should have a proper heat break so you can run higher temperatures. It's got PTFE tube apparently trapped inside this thing. How you replace that, I have no idea, but basically PTFE tubing next to the nozzle limits you to realistically 235 degrees C. Now some people will go higher than that, but the PTFE tubing will start to break down, will start to burn, you'll start to get stringing, you'll start to get bad extrusion, and it just won't print as well. And then you'll have to tear the thing apart and put a new piece in it. So this should have a true heat break. Like I've showed, I put on my Ender 3 V2 from Slice Engineering. That way it lifts the PTFE tube off the nozzle and it doesn't get as hot. So that to me is a weak point of this printer. And for the price you pay with everything else they did to make this a quality machine, that's an area that should have been first on the list, not forgotten. Overall, I like what Creality has done here. They've taken all the things that most people want and put it in this machine. You're going to pay more for it, but you get auto level already installed. You get a nice bed material. You get direct drive. You get dual threaded rods to keep this cross member level. Um, it's just, it's a nice package. A filament runout sensor. So overall, it's, it's a decent machine. I wish the hot end was better, higher temp, but it's still, I think, a good starting point for a lot of people that don't want to play with the machine and install a bunch of stuff, just want to take it out of the box and start using it, this is probably the ender to buy. If you like what I'm doing here, you can check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just use the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.